Good morning. <laughs> you can see our big orange counter. Isn't it crazy? Um, but anyway, I've been going through the JW Broadcasting, um, listening to some mostly talks, not so much the videos. Sometimes I do just, I've been taking little notes on them. Um, it really is enlightening to see a whole bunch of them kind of sequentially in a short period of time. You get a whole different feel. Uh, you see patterns in, in what they do, these Things they just kind of keep recycling. It's just a couple different categories that they do over and over most of the time. But anyway, a few things that I um, noted made a, made a uh, note about in the in the February 2015 one at minute two. Brother Heard mentions the accusation that the organization uses brainwashing. Now, this is really strange if you think about it because. Um, organizations that don't use brainwashing usually aren't accused of brainwashing. And um, I think I've, I've seen this a couple times in the literature too. I, I mean, that's really weird. Is, isn't there a few reference also about why they're not a cult, which that's really crazy too. It kind of can be a red flag, right? That why, why do you have to talk about that? <laughs> and then, then let's see, um, in the April, 2015, um, this is great. He's talking about um, the missionary journeys of the Apostle Paul. And he, he, he tells it in all like J.W. lingo, um, a, an assignment, a return visit, opposers. I mean, they're just reading those words into the Bible to make it seem like they're the, uh, you know, fulfillment of the first century church, whatever. And again, at minute 20, that he talks about the urgency, uh, essentially is what he's saying, the urgency of needing the publications in foreign lands and languages. So then a couple of things in the um, July 2015 broadcast at minute 22. This is very, I found this very interesting. He said, we don't engage in rebuttals to certain things that people would say about them that are negative. Um, I've noticed this for a long time, um, even when they talk about apostates or posers and their their points or their information, they never tell you what they are. They never tell you any specifics because they don't want you to know about it. So, of course, they don't engage in rebuttals because on a lot of those facts that people bring out, they, there's nothing they could really say. I guess they could lie, or which, which they do on some points, or make up things, but... Yeah, they don't engage in rebuttals. They don't even tell the people what what uh, apostates are talking about. They only want them to think that they're um, loving, doing bad things, right? So then also in July 2015 broadcast at minute 24, the accusation is, is we are accused of letting our children die. You know, and then he, then he explains why that's not true. And he says, parents decide what medical treatment is best for their children. Kind of making it seem like this totally free thing. It's very deceptive. It's very disingenuous. A and even while they're under these still medical dictates about what parts of blood and if you can store your blood. And historically, they have said things like, you might be worried that your child will not be resurrected or be in paradise if you let them have blood. Um, oh, parents decide. Because when you talk to witnesses, they actually think it's all conscience matter. And we know it's not. You can read about it in, in their different publications. The whole thing about blood and the different rules and forbidden fractions and being even declared associate, disassociated if you're not repentant enough. Many people think not being repentant enough uh, is so undefinable, and it really leaves a lot of discretion to the elders. And some people even say it just depends if they like you enough or if you do enough for the organization, if you're going to be declared repentant or not, if you you know, are found out to have taken blood. So anyway, that's just a few things from <laughs> some of the ones I watched.
Talk to you later.